Hi, my name's Sam, and I'm going to be doing a whiskey review today. Uh, today is not a Scotch review. This is actually a review of a Spanish whiskey. Um, also, I'm going to be doing a review first, and then after the review, I'm going to be talking about uh, an event that I went to here in Minnesota called Whiskey on Ice. I guess just a little review of the event and what I saw in my notes. Um, so this whiskey... Uh, not a scotch, a Spanish whiskey called uh, Navazos Palazzi uh, Boda Punta Single Oloroso Cask. <clears throat> um, this is a corn whiskey um, from Spain, aged in Oloroso Sherry Casks. Um, sort of a limited edition um, kind of thing, um, aged in a single cask. Um, 52%, so it's very strong, at least, um, relative to most Scotch whiskeys. Um, I tried this at, uh, at the tasting at Whiskey on Ice. Um, it was, I, I didn't go to the VIP. There's, they divided up into tiers. There's the normal tier and the VIP tier. This was one of the VIP tier whiskeys. They had some extra left over though. So at the stand where the guy was tasting these different whiskeys, he um, was letting people try some. And I thought it was really excellent. And it happened to be uh, a part of the silent auction. And so I bid on it and I ended up winning it. Um, online, this retails for about $100. Uh, I was lucky enough to get it significantly under that price. So I'm like pretty happy. I don't know if I would um, have spent money I wouldn't I don't know if I would have spent a hundred dollars on this if I hadn't have tried it beforehand so pretty happy about that uh, as you can see I got a Glencairn gas glass also from whiskey on ice so this is pretty cool it's my first Glencairn glass so um, the whiskey itself you can see pretty clearly it's very dark um, unfortunately the lights behind me but it's a uh, like a mahogany dark wood sort of the same color as like a Bunahaben. um no sediment or uh fog um at this point although i'll put some water in it later we'll see what happens on the nose it's like really intense oloroso sherry cask um in my in my sort of mental image of like a sherry forward um at least scotch whiskey you think of these like sort of sweet raisin flavors and i'm wondering if that's because a lot of the scotch whiskeys are aged uh, either partially in oloroso casks and then partially in pedro jimenez casks um like this one says it's it's purely oloroso so it's got this like just totally um totally uh, noticeable Oloroso Sherry. I mean, it smells um, like you opened a bottle of Oloroso Sherry. Very nutty, very pretty complex. That sort of oxidized, um, pungent aroma. There's a bit of the alcohol on there, but like not as much as you would expect considering it's 52%. Um, I would say it also has a bit of the corn noticeable on it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't smell like a bourbon or like a, like a cheap corn whiskey or anything, but it's sort of this mix of the Oloroso and the um, that, that corn forward note. Really nice, really complex. I mean, you could sit you could sit here and, and smell this for ages, really. Um, figs, you know, like sort of pecans. A bit of like leather almost it gets sort of sort of those dark complex musky flavors that you'll oftentimes get with um peated whiskeys but of course this is not there's no peat there's no smoke here really rich sensuous um sherry going on here it's 
So it's a bit, it's a bit hot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, um, I'm gonna take one sip and then I'm probably gonna dilute it down. I have my water over here. Just gonna sip real quick. <clears throat> and I have to say it was a bit of, um, a bit of a conundrum whether I should actually open this thing or not. Um, I mean, I'm not one for collecting really, but considering that it's, you know, sort of limited edition, I had to stop and think about it, but um, I decided to open it. So anyone else out there who bought it, I've, I've just added a little bit of value to your whiskey. You're welcome. Tastes great. So, man. Totally rich, sherry, um, just kind of like coming in waves through your mouth. The alcohol, not terribly noticeable. Um, like thinking back to uh, the Abuna recollection. It, it's been, Abuna's a bit higher than this, but I have a recollection of, you know, taking a sip of the Abuna and noticing that it was really good and then sort of feeling my mouth go numb because the alcohol content was so high. This is um, so smooth, the mouthfeel is just like, just totally rich, um, sort of thick. Not oily, but almost like buttery, kind of like a, like a soup or something, like a consomme. And the flavor is just more of that super rich Oloroso. And I mean, you know, I don't want to come off like this is a one note whiskey, I mean, it's, um, it's just uh, really deep. Um, nutty, creamy, really great. A little bitter on the end, but um, I mean, totally, I mean, just the, the smallest hint. I'm gonna put, um, a spoonful of water in here um, and it's pretty cool I mean you can totally see uh, you camera won't be able to pick it up but I mean when you put it in there you can see everything swirling around and sort of mixing and and so I don't know you know I, I'm mostly acquainted and spending most of my time drinking and researching scotch I don't know if putting water into non-scotch whiskeys is a practice that other people do. Um, I'm trying it here. I did it before and it seemed to work. I guess I'm a little, even though this is like a pretty high-end uh, and well-made whiskey, like I am a little concerned that it, it'll dilute out, but um, so far just more of the same, um, really that rich Nutty complex sherry. I think while I let this sit for a minute, I'm going to talk about whiskey on ice. So, really cool event um, that was uh, the end of April. Um, it's the beginning of May now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful springtime here in Minnesota. Pretty, pretty warm actually. So it was like three, three or four weeks ago. Um, I was down in Bloomington, which is a bit south of Minneapolis, uh, at a hotel there. Um, so. Uh, let's see, it cost $80, um, three hours long. Uh, they said there were 300 whiskeys there broken up um, into booths, and the booths were either, you know, there'd be one um, uh, distillery or, you know, some of them were distributors, so some of them were just a bit random. Um, ran from five to eight. Uh, they had free food, it was really nice. Um, there were all these extras you could do, some master classes and VIP stuff. Uh, those are a bit expensive, so I didn't didn't um, take those. Although you know, I'm sure they were really cool. Mm, the people who were running over were, were super nice. Uh, it was it was really easy. You know, you just you just um, register beforehand, walk up, they give you your stuff, they give you the Glencairn gas glass, they give you tasting notes, um, uh, they give you pen, um, so you can sort of do a little pre pre game um, strategizing. Um, so, you know, I, I found um, probably five or six whiskeys and distilleries that I was interested in looking at, so I marked those down. I have the book here, but I won't waste time getting it. Um, 
uh, layout was pretty nice. You know, they just had like a convention room. Um, uh, apparently in past years, it's been more like scotch focused. This year, I would say maybe a third of the whiskeys and a third of the distilleries were scotch and the rest were, um, you know, of course, Bourbons and American. There were a lot of Midwest whiskeys, a lot from uh, Iowa, Wyoming. Um, there was one uh, Japanese stand that had, uh, you know, Yamazaki and Hibiki. There was, of course, a, a Navazo Palazzi. Um, they had a couple of their offerings, so it was Spanish. There was one Italian um, distillery. It was actually, a, the, 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 the company's based out of Italy, but they buy um, Scotch whiskeys and distill them in Scotch. So everything happens in, in Scotland, um, but they are Italian and they sort of have this Italian sensibility. Um, their whiskeys are really, really interesting. Uh, very light, almost like white wines. Um, the name of the distillery, distillery was, um, I can't remember right now, Sal, Salmonia, something like that. We were making a joke because it sounded like Salmonella, so you know, so you'd get Salmonella from the whiskey. Um, the people I were with were just going crazy over it. Uh, so yeah, so you just go in, you know, you're getting half ounce pours. Um, Pretty standard. Uh, folks were running it, running a booth, super, super friendly. Um, pretty much everyone was really knowledgeable. Um, and yeah, just hung out and, and tried a bunch of whiskey and um, everyone was really friendly. Um, so some of the standouts I tried, uh, um, Highland Park 18 year, been wanting to try that for a while. It was really great, really awesome. Unfortunately, I tried it a little early on. I didn't realize it was peated. So uh, got a little peat on my palate, but um, Really great whiskey. Uh, of course, this one. Um, what else did I try? Sort of blurred together at the end. Uh, tried Japanese. I think it was the Yamazaki 12 year. Um, it was fine. Tried a lot of ryes. Uh, there was one rye that was really, really cool. Really just, you know, full bodied, just tasty rye. Um, can't remember offhand what it was. Maybe I should get my taste of this. Uh, I would say the standouts were definitely the Highland Park and then this, the Navazos Palazzi. Um, uh, yeah, just sort of head and shoulders above everything else. Uh, I had a great conversation with um, a fellow named Kieran who uh, started the Two Whiskey, Two, two, two Gingers Distillery. He, he actually lives here in Minneapolis. Um, super friendly guy, super cool. Um, talked about, you know, traveling around the United States and Ireland and uh, whiskey, of course. Um, so yeah, great event. Definitely recommend it. Um, you know, 80 bucks, a little pricey, but I, I'd say it's totally worth it. Um, feel like I was able to try a lot of whiskeys that I wouldn't have been able to try otherwise and would have been a little hesitant to buy, especially some of the more expensive ones. And it's cool too, like they have this VIP pass that you can get and so you go in an hour early and they have special whiskeys that are just reserved for, for VIP folks and they tend to be you know, the more expensive ones. So you'd have like Yellow Spot, the more expensive and rare ones. You know, if, if they don't get all drank up, uh, you can just go up and ask for them. So, and a lot of, you know, I mean, there's a lot of them didn't. So if you see a list, if you see a whiskey on this list and it's on the VIP list, you don't necessarily need to get the VIP tickets uh, unless you absolutely guarantee you want to try, you know, some super rare whiskey. All right, so it softened up a bit. Um, really nice, a bit more fruity, silky. Man, that's really nice. Totally rich, salt, like just a hint of solvent there, like just a hint of sort of like magic marker, but in a totally pleasant way. And I mean, I think you could just get that from all roast in general. I don't think it's the spirit itself. Man, just like really wonderful. I like that it's, I like it when it's softened up a bit. I might even put a bit more water in here later. Cause I, you know, sherry whiskeys you take, tend to take a lot of water, especially when they're 52%. So soft. 
um, really fruity now. Uh, the sort of nuttiness has subsided. Finish is nice and smooth. Not super long, but um, quite nice. I mean, yeah, it's really incredible just how pleasant the spirit itself is. It just really falls into the background and um, is really just a carrier for the uh, the sherry, which I, I really like. I could see getting a little fatigue. I mean, I think this is definitely something that... that um, rewards some respect and patience and time. I mean, it doesn't need to open up, but you can take a sip and you can set it aside for a while. Um, take a sip of water. Yeah, and kind of on the <clears throat> out breath, you kind of taste it again and it's, it's really, really quite something. Yeah, it's cool, this almost like musky, like animal scent almost. I'll have to put it aside for a little while. Hmm. And like perfectly sweet. I mean, the sweetness is um, subdued. Uh, refined but it's there it's certainly there you know totally a fall time whiskey or sort of you know, i'm drinking in the spring but you know it sort of has that roast leaves sort of roast chestnuts warmth to it outside of the outside of the you know alcohol percentage itself um just got this really warm characteristic to it really appealing and complex. So I'll leave it there. Um, Navazos Palazzi malt whiskey, Eau de Punta single Oloroso cask, cask strength, very fine whiskey, very fine Spanish corn whiskey, certainly worth checking out, certainly worth picking up if you're into sherry forward whiskeys, if you're trying something a bit different, if you're into uh, sherry in general. If you're into whiskey, if you like drinking whiskey, I would recommend buying a bottle of this. Maybe buy two and hold on to one of them because I could see this being something that's, uh, you know, maybe a little pricey in the future. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. My name's Sam and this is a whiskey review.